When they drew the plastic cover off the ground floor of Shea Stadium in New York, the Jets' ground crew turned the first page of a day that would add new chapters to the NFL history book with a highly emotional moment for one man and an incredible record-breaking game for another as the New York Jets faced the Buffalo Bills on the last Sunday of the regular season in 1973. Despite frigid temperatures and heavy snows, over 47,000 fans turned out to be part of several historical moments. There were those who came out to say thank you to Weeb, as the 20-year head coaching career of Weeb Eubank had reached its final game. In his 20 years, the first nine with the Colts, the last 11 with the Jets, Eubank had coached his teams to 130 wins and had accomplished a feat yet to be matched, as he has won championships with teams from both sides of the NFL's conference dividing line. Eubank's last season in New York has not been a comfortable one as the Jets, beset by injuries, have won only four games and are not going anywhere this season. But one man who may be going places is the Jets' brilliant quarterback, Joe Namath. Widespread rumors during the week prior to the game contend that Namath may be rifling his last spirals in a Jet uniform in this game. While Namath may or may not be moving on, one man who has been moving inexorably forward is O.J. Simpson who in today's game needs just 61 yards to top Jimmy Brown's 10-year-old NFL record of 1,863 yards gained rushing in one season and has an outside shot at gaining 2,000 yards this season. It is a very popular endeavor as fans all across the country and even many of the Jets players are rooting for O.J. to get the record. While the Jet defense is not about to make the record easy for him, neither will they be shamed if he does set the record against them. For O.J. Simpson is that kind of a man. He is that kind of man who never once has failed to mention those who have made his incredible year possible. The men who toil in the trenches, sacrificing their bodies for O.J.'s yards. But it is indeed a symbiotic relationship. For by making possible the remarkable season that O.J. is having, the Bills have become one of the NFL's better teams and still have a slim chance to make the playoffs this season. O.J. would be the first to say that a win today is far more important for the team than any personal goal he may achieve as the Buffalo Bills face the New York Jets in the NFL Game of the Week. As they emerged from their locker room before the game, the Bills to a man were united in their overpowering desire to get O.J. his record. And it has been this singleness of purpose that has molded the Bills into a team. Guard Reggie McKenzie vowed early in the year that he and line mates Bruce Jarvis, Mike Montler, Joe DeLamalier, Donnie Green, Dave Foley, and Paul Seymour would get Simpson 2,000 yards this season. An ambitious prediction, but one that could reach fruition in this game. Those who turned out to see if Simpson could do it did not have long to wait. The Bills' game plan was simple. Just give the ball to O.J. And if the Bills' offensive line could create the blocks to free Simpson, they could control the game. Simpson's first carry netted four yards. And on his second, he very nearly went all the way but stumbled over his own man. On the 30-yard run, Simpson reached the 5,000-yard mark in five years. A first goal was reached. And as Joe Ferguson continued to hand off to Simpson, Jimmy Brown's record edged nearer and nearer. After carrying three straight times, and with the Jets keying Simpson, Ferguson slipped the ball to Jim Braxton, who picked up 11 yards and a first down. The keying on Simpson makes it easier for the Bills' offensive line to create holes for the other backs. And in this way, O.J.'s individual performance makes the Bills a better team. Now near the Jet goal line, Simpson made his last carry of the drive as the Bills had marked 64 yards on O.J.'s runs and the threat of his runs and reached a first down on the Jet three-yard line. But here the Jets stiffened, and on three straight plays, they straightened up Braxton short of the goal line. Finally, from the one, Braxton got the call again and just managed to get the score.
the Bills led 7-0, but the Jets' competitive fires were burning, for they strongly protested the call. They, too, wanted this game very badly to help repay all that We View Bank had done for them. Another way that Simpson's performance has helped the Bills as a team has been defensively. The Bills' defenders go all out to stop the opposition and give the ball over to the offense and their bread and butter man. And they did just that on the Jets' first series, holding them without a first down. The countdown to a record had reached its last stop. Simpson needed six yards to break Jimmy Brown's record. It would take him just one carry to do it. Using number 68, Joe Delamalier's block on Burgess Owens, Simpson cut back to a record. O.J. Simpson was now the all-time single-season rushing champ, and with the men who had made it all possible, he celebrated. Simpson reached out and touched every member of his offensive line in the huddle. Montler, Delamalier, McKenzie, Foley, Green, and Seymour. They had made it possible, and it was as much for them as himself that Simpson accepted the game ball. the sideline, Simpson refused to return to the game until he got a piece of Jim Ringo, the Bills' offensive line coach, for he has put together a line of two rookies, a second, third, fourth, and fifth year man, and made them one of the best in the game, one that may mark Buffalo's return to football's elite core of winners. Simpson's next carry momentarily tarnished his record as he fumbled and the Jets took over. There was still a game going on, a game that both the Bills and the Jets wanted very badly. It took Namath just two plays to tie the game, hitting first on a pass for 11 yards, then a 48-yard touchdown pass to Jerome Barkham. On a repeat, we can see that Dwight Harrison had Barkham well covered, but Barkham, the 6'4 second year man, outbattled him for the ball, and the Jets had tied the game 7 7. now set out to get Simpson to 2,000 yards, but the Jets, back in the game now, were waiting for him. With Simpson stopped, the Bills' offense momentarily ground to a halt. But it was not to last long, as on their next drive, Buffalo again began to move. Simpson, even though he was being carefully keyed, was important in the drive, for the Jets always had to be wary of his threat. Ferguson now began to pass, and confident of his offensive line's ability to hold the Jets out, he sent both backs on circle routes and hit Braxton for 15 yards. On his next pass, Ferguson found Bob Chandler along the sideline, and Buffalo had yet another first down. Then from the Jet 13, Ferguson figured it was time for Simpson to get back in the act, and Simpson got the score that put Buffalo back on top. On a repeat, 
Watch Braxton, number 34, throw the key block on Owens again to give Simpson an alley to the end zone. The Bills now led 14 to seven, and Simpson had reached the 100-yard mark for the 11th time this season. Another NFL record. Though he would not carry the ball again in the half, the Bills would score yet another touchdown. On the Jets series, which began with a minute left in the half, Namath tried the long ball to Barkham again, but this time the Bills' good coverage paid off. With 30 seconds left in the half, the Jets were forced to punt, and Julian Fagan's short punt was taken on the fly and returned all the way by rookie Bill Cahill for a 51-yard touchdown. In just 48 seconds, the Bills had scored twice to take a 21-7 lead. But while O.J.'s records were nice, winning is the name of the game. And with their two quick strikes, the Bills were now well on their way to their ninth win of the season. At the end of the first half, O.J. Simpson had not only broken the record of the great Jim Brown, but had a total of 108 yards on the day. For most backs, this figure alone would constitute a remarkable performance. But O.J. was just beginning, for there were three goals that remained to shoot for. First and most important was to win the game and give the Bills a very impressive 9-5 record. Then there was Miami's team rushing record to break, and finally, the outside chance to go over 2,000 yards rushing. But the Jets had the ball first in the new half, and Joe Namath passed 16 yards to Rich Castor over the middle to start things off. The fumble was ruled after the whistle. Namath was having limited success through the air, but on the ground was another story. New York had just 32 yards rushing in the first half. For the second, they would add merely seven more. The absence of John Riggins, of course, hurt the Jet ground attack. When Buffalo got the ball, Ferguson surprised by taking to the air, and Bob Chandler's fine sideline move on Burgess Owens added immeasurably to a 36-yard gain. Big Jim Braxton scored his second touchdown of the day, and Buffalo increased its lead to 28-7. Again, Namath threw on first down for New York, and again it was successful, this time to Jerome Barkham for a gain of 35 yards. Now the Jets completely gave up on their ineffective running game, and Namath paid for the lack of deception by being sacked by Mike Kadish. The former Notre Dame player was Miami's first draft choice two years ago, but saw little action. The Dolphins gave up on him, and he's proved to be a valuable addition to the Buffalo front four. On third down, Namath went deep for Barkham, who had his man beat. The throw was perfect, but safety Donnie Walker came over to nearly make an interception. New York had to punt. Once again, it was Simpson's turn. The immediate target, Miami's record team rushing total of 2,960 yards, set only last season by Zonka, Morris, and Kick. The strategy was simple, the deception non-existent. Ferguson gave the ball to O.J. time after time with an occasional change of pace to fullback Braxton.
Finally, the play came that was the finest tribute of all to the restored Buffalo offensive line coached by Jim Ringo. Buffalo's new mark belonged as much to Dave Foley, Reggie McKenzie, Bruce Jarvis, Mike Montler, Donnie Green, Joe DeLamalier, and Paul Seymour, as it did to O.J. and the other backs who contributed to it. On a short gain over right tackle, O.J. got the yards, and Buffalo had a new team record. For punctuation on the very next play, the juice turned it on for 25 yards on a sweep. The fourth quarter began and Buffalo kept on running. This drive ended on a John Leipold field goal from close range to increase the score to 31 to seven. With the game out of reach, Jet coach Weeb Bank decided to remove Joe Namath rather than risk injury, but Namath already on the field gave a decisive answer. Though he remained in the game, the results were the same. Namath's passes were on target, but the Bills covered closely. So New York punted, and it was time for the Bills' offense and the man they call Juice to take the field again. Simpson's nickname of Juice has been shortened to simply J by head coach Lou Saban. If it weren't for Saban, Simpson wouldn't be near to approaching any of the records he set today. When he was a blocker with the Cleveland Browns, the man with the phone in his ear learned the importance of a strong offensive line. When he came to Buffalo last year, his prime goal was to get the necessary blocking up front that O.J. would need. Another important ingredient in Buffalo's assault on the record book was Jim Braxton, O.J.'s running mate. At 243 pounds, he's a powerful blocker and runner in his own right. In this game, he would run 24 times for 108 yards. Then came the moment many were convinced could never happen in the National Football League. O.J. took a pitch out and followed a fine block by Braxton for a seven-yard gain. It made him the only man in history to exceed the 2,000-yard mark. While the Bills celebrated on the field, appropriately, number 67, Reggie McKenzie, led the cheering. For it was McKenzie who last summer, in a burst of enthusiasm, told Simpson he could not only break Brown's record, but go over 2,000 yards. Today, in frozen Shea Stadium on the final day of the season, Simpson had done it all. It may be appropriate at this moment of elation to remember the man whose records were eclipsed, for in no way are the accomplishments of Jim Brown diminished. He still is and still remains the greatest power runner the game has seen. As Simpson himself has said, no one will ever combine the attributes of strength, speed, and skill that Jim Brown had. Appropriately, when Simpson finished his ride on the shoulders of his teammates, he searched for head coach Saban, the man who gave him his opportunity to run so much, then sought out line coach Jim Ringo, the man who helped establish the Bills' great forward wall. there was nothing but jubilation and joy on the Bills bench, the story on the other bench was quite different. Buffalo had kicked another field goal after Simpson's run, and though the game was lost for New York and all the attention was on O.J., Joe Namath was determined to have one last moment for his coach, Weeb Eubank. Despite the condition of the field and the pain in his knees, Joe Namath drove his team downfield on five straight passes.
The last was to Rich Castor for the touchdown that brought the final score to 34-14. But it wasn't the additional seven points that Namath got that mattered. It was the gesture to the only pro coach he's known, Weeb Eubank. So for the little roly-poly coach, 20 years of coaching in the NFL came to an end. And though his departure was overshadowed by the deeds of O.J. Simpson, his achievements stand fast and firm. Three world championships, four division crowns, two great teams, the Jets and the Colts. He is the only coach to win championships in both leagues. He developed two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Unitas with Baltimore, Namath of New York. Two great stories took place in Shea Stadium this icy December day. O.J. Simpson and his Buffalo Bills reached their peak and finished the season with a very fine 9-5 record. They missed the playoffs by a hair, but their future together is bright indeed. For the Jets, the future is clouded. They finished a disappointing season, and their popular coach, Weeb Eubank, is gone.